Whether you like him or you hate him, one can't deny that Vince McMahon is a polarizing figure within the professional wrestling world. However, with the release of his current Netflix documentary titled Mr. McMahon, there have been many things that have come out during this documentary that have made Vince McMahon look a lot worse than many believed him to be previously. But what's going on, guys? It is Catch, back with another video on the channel. If you're new around here, I make weekly professional wrestling content on all things wrestling. So if you could, give this video a like and a subscribe. Here are six shocking reasons that have come out of the Vince McMahon documentary. Hulk Hogan was a prolific star for Vince McMahon in the 1980s. He was WWF champion through the first four WrestleManias and had a large role behind the scenes in the terms of the direction of how his character was treated, but also he was McMahon's golden goose. He toured the entire country, ma making the WWF did throughout his career was actually something he didn't do in the wrestling industry, and that was him testifying at Vince McMahon's 1994 steroid trial. So a bit of background, Vince McMahon had been indicted uh, by the US government on suspension suspicion of supplying illegal anabolic steroids to his wrestlers. Now, Hogan was working for WCW at the time, and that's a different issue, but he had not seen Vince for, I think, around six to nine months from what he said in the documentary. Um, but Hogan had gone on a previous TV show previously and had lied about uh, how many steroids he took, and it caught up with him previously. But this time in the court, even though he had immunity from the US government, Hogan told the truth and told the court that Vince McMahon had not been supplying the steroids to the wrestlers. Now, the wrestlers had been taking them of their own accord, but McMahon himself had not been supplying them to the wrestlers. Now, unfortunately for the US government, Hogan did draw the ire of them, but he did save Vince McMahon from a potential life sentence. Uh, and weirdly enough, his testimony actually saved him from that and uh, exonerated him, and he was not guilty uh, of that. Ironically enough, Vince actually showed up uh, with a neck brace to the trial. He had, he had surgery on his neck previously in a pathetic attempt to garner support. I don't know why he did that, but effectively Hogan's words saved Vince McMahon from you know a lot of things that could have been a lot worse and uh, enabled him to take control, you know, have control of the wrestling landscape as it was and really just keep going until WCW made something of a competition in the mid to late 90s. I think it was around 96, but yes, Hogan's role was pivotal in that steroid trial in keeping Vince McMahon away from the authorities. The 1990s was a testing period for Vince McMahon. He'd already gone through the steroid trial in 94, but prior to that, in the early 1990s, there was something that was going on called the Ring Boy Scandal. Now, from what I could ascertain from the documentary itself, this is where underage boys were hired uh, to set up the rings, take down the rings, and uh, do every little, all these little nitty gritty jobs uh, that required the ring around the ring. Anyhow, there was a couple of people there at the time, most notably Mel Phillips and Terry Garvin, who held uh, relatively high positions within the WWF at that point in time. I think Mel Phillips was a ring announcer and Terry Garvin was one of the main execs at that point in time. Now, depending on who you ask, uh, according to Bret Hart, he called Mel Phillips a total pedophile who preyed on young boys. And if these young boys were complying with their request for sexual favors, they weren't hired and it was just bizarre the, the actual person who broke the story initially was a guy by the name of phil mushnick now he was of, definitely of the assumption that uh or well, not of the assumption is probably not the right word but definitely of the opinion that was a pedophile ring that was being run by three guys in this ww in the wwf at the time so obviously there was terry garvin and mel phillips but also pat patterson they were all accused uh of these things um and um, unfortunately for mel phillips and terry garvin neither were ever hired again but pat patterson Madison was actually brought back to WWF about uh, a year later or so and that's because Vince McMahon believed there was only two people who were guilty in the whole thing uh, and he believed Pat Patterson wasn't the one who was guilty uh, and Patterson actually played a critical role in later WWE as well. McMahon's actual response to it was just to blast Phil Mushnick in, in the documentary and I quote, Phil Mushnick was trying to build this whole case of how rotten the company was, he didn't care how he did it, he didn't care whether he hurt people involved on one side or the other, he just just wanted to write this salacious piece about the WWE. And to be perfectly honest, I'm not surprised that Vince says that. You know, he's quite up his own backside and the fact he's saying that at a time where it was quite evident that this was happening just shows how out of touch he was, but how also he wanted to protect certain individuals within the WWE. 
With the Attitude Era in full swing in 1999 and with WWF winning the war against WCW in the Monday Night Wars, things were looking up for Vince McMahon's company. However, an incident over the edge in 1999 definitely tarnished that event, but also that year as well. And that was the incident involving the shock death of Owen Hart, announced dead unfortunately. Now in the documentary, Vince McMahon goes on to explain that because the live audience were in a power blackout, they were unaware of what had happened but fans at home had been informed of the incident as JR, JR, good old JR, had rather tearfully mentioned it uh, to the TV audience and uh, that was not good. And so a lot of the wrestlers also knew backstage as well. Um, but the problem with that was because the live fans had no idea what was happening, Vince McMahon decided to proceed with the show, which he shockingly alluded to the fact that if it were him in Owen Hart's position, he one of the would have wanted the show to continue to quote Vince will my body out the building and continue the show now the quite interesting thing about it is the superstars didn't want to continue wrestling like you could literally see in the documentary the ring had Owen Hart's blood on it and so you could definitely see Undertaker took on Stone Cold Steve Austin in the main event of that pay-per-view and neither of them were in any position to fight that I mean just look at Taker's eyes Taker was one who stood in character a lot of the time uh, as well and so he was clearly affected by it. and the other interesting thing about it is Owen Hart's brother Brett uh, who just happened to be on a flight at the time he believed something had gone wrong uh, with Owen Hart as he felt something come over him at that point in time and he believed that the WWF and Vince in particular had murdered Owen to get back at Brett who had left the WWF WWF in 1997 for WCW as a result of the Montreal screw job. Now Hart was champion at that point in time. So losing him in the way they did, I think Vince, you know, didn't like the way Hart had done it. And, uh, you know, I guess this was Brett's way of thinking, you know, that maybe they got rid of Owen just to get back at him. But in reality, it was a malfunctioning harness. And once Brett Hart had found out about that, he personally forgave Vince in that regard professionally they were still not on speaking terms but that would change in the next few years but yeah the, the death of Owen Hart in 1999 was definitely a major shock to that industry Back in the 1980s and to a more lesser extent the 1990s, the early 1990s, Jesse the Brain Ventura wanted to set up a union for WWF wrestlers at that point in time. It was a way to get better pay conditions and better working conditions as the WWF wrestlers were known to work long days and long weeks, constantly traveling up and down the United States and internationally as well. And Ventura was smart in having the right idea of creating a union and he'd had notable people in that union that wanted to start it up as well, including Hulk Hogan. However, Hulk Hogan betrayed his for his fellow uh, superstars and, and comrades by telling Vince McMahon that they were attempting to unionize. Now, once Vince caught wind of this union, he effectively said anyone who joined that union would be automatically fired and uh, would not have a good job within the WWF or a good time of it. And it's no surprise that a few months later, Jesse Ventura was actually let go uh, by the company indirectly uh, as a result uh, of what he was trying to achieve by having the union supporting wrestlers and it just shows that Vince just wanted to have all the power and authority and control of his superstars on his own and over his own head it doesn't really show much of a compassion for wrestlers and his fellow you know execs and workers as well as I'll get into a little later Vince was also known for his litany of sexual assaults and affairs throughout his tenure as WWE chairman. And one of the most shocking moments in the documentary itself is the revisiting of these said allegations of uh, misconduct and trafficking against Vince. To specify Janelle Grant, Rita Chatterton, the first ever female referee, and uh, one of the WWE legends, Tony Atlas, even goes on to say that being a woman at that particular time in the late 80s, early 90s, was as bad as there was, as there was lots of abuse uh, going on. Ashley Massaro, a former WWE diva in and around the ruthless aggression era, she had rejected Vince's advances and began and as a result, Vince had began writing uh, her promos and all her scenes for her. And that, this made her on-screen character look bad to damage her reputation. Masara allegedly was also violated by a doctor as part of WWE's tour of Kuwait in 2006. Now, WWE and Vince made this issue go away as to not let one bad experience ruin good work they were doing in the region at that point in time, which is just a complete cop-out in uh, not going after that doctor and charging him with offenses. Unfortunately for Ashley Masara, 
though she passed away in 2019 due to ongoing mental health issues she received as a result and uh, the ongoing one with Janelle Grant uh, as well that lawsuit is still sitting in the courts at the moment however due to Vince's ridiculous allegations against other female staffs and the lewd text messages that made him legit resign from all positions within WWE this year um, unfortunately that lawsuit with Janelle Grant has actually been paused while the criminal case takes precedent one of the major revelations that comes as a result of the documentary is WWE legend and Hall of Famer Stone Cold Steve Austin's belief on CTE. So to give you an understanding, CTE is a disease which affects brain function, activity and critical decision making, which in the early to mid 2000s was not taken as seriously as it is today. In the documentary, it focused on a section of wrestlers who have died as who have died young and the ongoing role of concussions within the WWE. CTE is most commonly associated Associated with the events of what happened to Chris Benoit, the deplorable events uh, that Chris Benoit did in his family's death and his own. Now, at that Chris Benoit stuff is all well documented, uh, and he was his brain activity uh, when later examined. You know, resembled that of an Alzheimer's patient. So Benoit took a lot of head bumps uh, in his career as well, which might have affected his critical decision making uh, as well. But Austin, who by his own self admission had only been severely concussed once, does not believe in CTE. He goes on to say, and quote, I can't remember having too many concussions in the business of pro wrestling. And my take on that has always been if you were just wrestling and you got concussions, you're probably doing something wrong. Now, Austin's probably had more knocks than he claims to have had but i just think that whole thing is completely wrong and the fact that wwe have taken numerous uh, steps to avoid concussions and bat and have better concussion protocols is probably a reason why we don't see you know we see a lot of wrestlers living a lot longer than they had previously and as a result of the benoit tragedy the wwe took strides to avoid uh direct steel chair shots to the head and as i've mentioned they also rang in concussion protocols as well so i hope I, st I still think stone cold's a, a bit of a weirdo when it comes to that like how can you not believe in it it's a complete and you know it's a, a facted documented mental you know health issue and a physical issue at that as well so the fact that he says that means i think he's had a few more bumps on the head than he, he claims to have had um but in in general i just think this whole mr mcmahon documentary i think netflix sort of painted vince mcmahon in a very negative light i mean the whole start of it was the documentary was quite interesting and in how vince built up the business but the fact that all the good that Vince has done has been marred by all these controversies over the years, whether it be sexual assaults, affairs, abuse, hush money payments in 2022, these lewd text messages and all that stuff that led him to resign earlier this year. Everything he did well has been tarnished by all the bad that has just come out over the years. And I think Vince tries to hide that by alluding to that it's just his character on oh, my characters like it. But I feel like our part of the Mr. McMahon character is Vince McMahon himself and a lot of people when interviewed in the documentary couldn't answer the question on what Vince McMahon's legacy will be they just couldn't answer it you know anyone from Hulk Hogan to John Cena they could not answer that question so it says a lot about Vince as a person but also his character as well and a lot of it I understand is online but you know Vince I think just thought he could get away with a lot and it's all unfortunately catching up with him at, at his elderly stage as he is now so you know i don't know what's going to happen in that lawsuit but and the lawsuit in that criminal case but it does not look good for vince and the fact that he hasn't denied these allegations and the only thing he put out was a statement regarding his portrayal in this netflix documentary just trying to downplay what was being put in it just says it all about vince mcmahon but anyway, guys, that has been the end of this video. I hope you have enjoyed. Let me know what you thought of the, the video and what you also think of the documentary as well. I thought it was quite an interesting view. And if you've missed the previous video, I made a video on why Jey Uso deserved to win the Intercontinental Championship. So check that out if you have a minute. But anyway, guys, I will leave you to it. Have a great day. See ya. Bye.